Good afternoon, Bruins. My name is Christine Werlenick, and I'm the Senior Director of Regional Networks, Bruin Recruitment, and Alumni Scholars Programs at UCLA. Thank you for joining us today for our debut episode in our YouTube Live series, Going Global. We will be discussing Going Global UCLA Ventures into Online Learning. By now, hopefully, you've learned about UCLA One, a great resource if you're looking to connect with other Bruins and take the next step in your career. We have over 20,000 Bruins on the platform in addition to job postings and professional groups for networking. It gets easy, it, it, it's easy to get connected. Join UCLA One today for your next opportunity. We want to be able to customize these events towards your interests. To do that, we need your feedback and suggestions for upcoming topics. You can send them to us at regionalnetworks at alumni.ucla.edu. Today's episode is powered by membership. So I want to take a moment to thank our Blue, Gold, and Life members. You make events like this possible for the entire UCLA community. If any of you are interested in upgrading your membership, you'll see a link in the live chat. Our special guest today is Dean Wayne Schmutz. Wayne Schmutz is Dean of Continuing Education and UCLA Extension at UCLA, a position he has held since October 2013. He leads the academic, financial, operational, and outreach efforts of this self-supporting $70 million enterprise with over 38 students, offering more than 5,000 classes, classes and programs per year. Dean Schmutz is committed to collaborative partnerships building between Extension and the UCLA academic community, as well as with Extension and the broader civic community, citizens, businesses, and governments. He embraces a learner-centric approach with a focus on enhancing access to quality post-secondary education programs while providing the support services necessary to facilitate student success. A native California, Californian, he is a Phi Beta Kappa graduate with a BA in history from UC Berkeley and an MA in political science and PhD in higher education from Penn State. Even though this isn't an in-person event, it is still a highly interactive one. You can ask direct questions to Dean Schmutz by using the live chat, so don't be shy with questions. We'll try to answer as many as possible. So let's meet our speaker, Dean Schmutz. Thank you, Christine. Uh, very nice to be with all of you. I'm going to switch into the uh, mode of my presentation now. Should be up. Whoops. There we go. Great. It's nice to be with. Whoops, is it up or not? It's not up yet. Sorry. There you go. There we go. Okay. Sorry for the little technical glitch there. Uh, it's very nice to be with everyone today in this uh, first ever uh, YouTube presentation. Um, Christine gave a little bit of background uh, on me, but I wanted to say just a couple of words about why I would be talking about UCLA Global. And the reason has to do uh, is the fact that I spent uh, many years at Penn State University being part of something there called the World Campus, Penn State World Campus, which was an online university of that, online campus of that university. We had about 40 undergraduate and 40 graduate degrees by the time I left, uh, I had been the executive director for about six years. Uh, we had about 16,000 students online. So we served a large population and everything was on online. Uh, students never came to campus. So four years ago, UCLA decided it was interested in moving into the online space and uh, recruiting me. And so for the last four years, I've been working to see how we could uh, expand our uh, uh, our offerings here at UCLA and really become a part of the online environment. So let me uh, start with what exactly is UCLA Global Online? Well, first it's a global UCLA educational presence. It really expands our uh, global presence that UCLA has already, but that presence right now is primarily research oriented and also reputational, of course. Uh, global Online is going to be about delivering campus programs, primarily master's degrees online, as well as extension certificate programs online. And it will be both nationally and internationally so that we will have our programs across the world and across the nation. The, the way it will happen is through digital technologies, of course, 
and this organization will be a self-supporting organization uh, of UCLA Global. So why Global Online? Well, the first uh, issue is that post-secondary education is needed worldwide. It's clear that education makes a difference in, uh, in all countries in terms of their uh, socioeconomic development and their standing in the world. And so most countries now are putting lots of energy into post-secondary education. At the same time, the United States has the best post-secondary system in the world, and that's why so many people from around the world want to participate in, in our post-secondary education. In addition, there is a growing middle-class population worldwide, and what that means is that there are people who can afford to pay what it costs for us to deliver our education, both here in the States, but also worldwide. And then, of course, also the technology uh, that increasingly gets better makes global online possible as we can reach anywhere in the world just like we're doing today. Uh, in particular, over the last five years, educational technology has been growing rapidly and we've been identifying and innovating to figure out new ways to use technology to help us in the educational process. And that's made a big difference in allowing us to deliver high quality educational programs from a distance. You may ask, why UCLA? Well, we're kind of late getting into this. Uh, many, many other institutions are already doing it. And as I mentioned, I was at Penn State and we had uh, been involved since 1997. But why UCLA now? Well, first, UCLA has an outstanding reputation uh, already. We're ranked the number one public university in America. And if you haven't heard that, which you may not have, that was announced about a month ago. Uh, so um, this was a big deal and it's important for UCLA to be high in those rankings like that. We are the 10th ranked global university, 13th ranked university in terms of our brand power. And of course we have lots of popularity in Asia where I was surprised to learn when I came here that there are about 50 or 60 outlets in Asia that sell UCLA gear, hats, shirts, sweatshirts, etc all which speak to the popularity of UCLA in Asia. We're also doing this because of a public service mission. It creates access to a high quality institution by many, many others across the globe. Uh, and in the 21st century, we are in an interconnected world. It is critical that we be part of that with a global presence. And then finally, I'll just mention that UCLA needs new revenue streams. With the decrease in state higher education funding that's happened in the last 10 years, uh, universities, uh, public un universities have had to identify new sources of revenue that can help them essentially pay their bills. And this is one avenue that can do that. So um, we want to reach the world. At the same time, the revenue will be important to UCLA in this process. I wanted to mention that um, in terms of academic authority, it will be business as usual at UCLA. All the campus programs and all the extension programs go through a very thorough academic senate process of review and uh, qualification to make sure they're legitimate UCLA programs and courses. That will be no different for UCLA um, a Global Online. Uh, we want to have the same academic standards as UCLA has always had. In fact, that's what makes it attractive. And so that will be no different as we move into this space of global online learning. So what is UCLA Extension's role in this? I'm the Dean of Extension, but also now the founding Dean of UCLA Global Online. And Extension's role is really to provide leadership and help, um, help, help us work into this new environment of global online learning. We will be a programming course producer, of course, but we will also be the, the major service provider or de delivery agent for the online uh, courses and programs that we're going to offer. Um, delivery agent means that all the campus courses that are offered and all the extension ones will go through the system of delivery that we have created here at Extension. Now, the plus part of that is that Extension has been online since 1997. 20 years. 
even now this year we have about 13,000 students that take online courses from us. So we have a lot of experience doing this and we're looking forward to serving the whole campus with it. When I came, however, it was clear that we needed to update our systems. So that's what we're, up, we're doing right now in student services, marketing, instructional design and technology so that we can get those systems ready to serve a much larger audience than even the 13,000 we serve right now. Extension also has the ability to scale and we're talking about large numbers here that we, we want to serve. So that's an important uh, function. Uh, we have a service orientation, which isn't always true of higher education, but things like 24, 24-7 uh, tech help and uh, support systems are really important. And uh, we have experience in doing that sort of thing. And then finally, it's important that there be a singular UCLA market presence out there. If every school and college did their own thing with regard to this, it would fracture our pre presence in the marketplace. And by having one delivery agent like experience, uh, like extension, then we have the chance to have a singular market presence that is really essential in, in an era in which marketing is absolutely critical. The online space is very uh, competitive. So marketing is a key part of that uh, for any institution that wants to go online. I wanted to say a few words about quality because uh, oftentimes uh, the first criticism uh, that comes to online education is that it can't possibly be as good as face-to-face -face education. Well, that's simply not true. It is certainly true that it's a different experience than being face-to-face, -face, but it isn't true that it can't be a quality uh, experience. In fact, the research that's occurred over many, many years consistently shows the same finding that there's no significant difference in the at learning outcomes for students who take courses online or take them face-to-face. Uh, -face. In fact, one of the very significant things that's happened since uh, online started, especially over the last 10 years, is that online has begun to change the way that face-to-face -face classes are handled. What we've learned, and people, some people knew this ahead of time, is that lecture often is not a very good uh, learning mechanism or tool. And so what's happening now in some face-to-face -face classes is students are asked to read or watch material outside of class. And then the classroom is used just for interaction of students and faculty members around projects or programs and things like that. So uh, it's really interesting. Online is changing the way that face-to-face uh, -face actually works in terms of instruction. In addition, over the last 20 years, a variety of standards, quality standards and groups have been created. So Quality Matters is an organization that sets standards for courses and programs. Online Learning Consortium sets them for courses, programs, and faculty. And then the University Professional and Continuing Education Association has a hallmarks of, of excellence, which sets standards for the institution in terms of online learning. So over time, we have developed lots of different quality standards to ensure that the educational programs that we're providing online uh, are uh, high quality and deliver what we say they can. Now, that doesn't mean they can't be improved. And I would suspect that uh, every year we're going to get better and better and better at this, at, which makes online learning a really exciting place to be at this point in time. I wanted to mention uh, the target audiences that we will be uh, focusing on at, at UCLA Global Online. Um, and that will be professionals and postgraduates. There's a dramatic change going on in the economy worldwide in which skills uh, and the um, requirements for working in particular jobs are constantly changing. New kinds of jobs are constantly being created. And one of the things that's just fascinating is that it's been uh, predicted by research on uh, this issue right now that in the next, those graduates coming out of UCLA right now or any university will have three to five careers throughout their lifetime. That's not jobs, that's careers, which means that every five, six, 10 years, they're going to have to prepare themselves for a new career. That means education is really, really critical. And so our focus now on professionals and postgraduates in online 
is to address that kind of change that's happening in the worldwide workforce. UCLA has chosen not to offer any undergraduate degree programs at this point in time online. It wants to instead focus on graduate level work. And uh, ultimately that could change, but right now it wants its undergraduate experience to be a residential one. So uh, our focus will be on professionals and postgraduates in the next few years. One of the things that's really important in this space is the need for distinctiveness. We're in a highly, highly competitive environment right now and uh, in terms of online. And so for UCLA, which is late to the game in this uh, online educational delivery system, we need to stand out from the competition. And so I wanted to say just a few words about how we're going to do that. So the first uh, kind of distinctiveness is, is really around the curricula. We're going to offer two kinds of uh, programs. One are academic programs that are delivered from the campus a master's degree in um, um, public health or some other field that is very academically oriented. Extension offers uh, certificate programs and our approach is very applied. So our instructors are not professors at UCLA, but they are instead practicing professionals from around Los Angeles who teach in terms of how they do their skill and how they do their profession. So individuals around the world will have a, a choice between an academic program with our professors or an applied program with our practicing professionals from Los Angeles. And that choice we think will make a difference in terms of our attractiveness in the marketplace. We also intend to have a diversity of educational offerings from campus. We will have master's degrees, as I mentioned, certificate programs uh, and individual courses, although the focus generally will be on degrees and certificates. We even right now are exploring the possibility of doing a uh, doctoral degree uh, in nursing, a uh, doctoral degree of nursing practice. So it can go all through all the way up to that level uh, on campus programs. In extension, we'll be offering certificate programs, professional development courses, and what we call XL courses, which are UCLA courses delivered by extension. So they are true UCLA courses, are transcripted at UCLA, but they're delivered by extension to an audience that's not uh, matriculated at UCLA. And then to create some uh, diversity, we're going to offer some new educational packages. Increasingly, it's clear that people, particularly professionals, professionals want shorter educational programs than an entire quarter, 10, 11 weeks, or uh, even uh, for a degree sometimes, they have to spend two or three years. So we plan to develop modules, which will be much shorter than a 10 week. They may be a week long or two weeks long. We intend to develop learning ob objects, which could be as short as 15 minutes or a half hour. Uh, and the reason for that is to deal with when people need uh, to learn something in a shorter amount of time, we want to be able to address that. This is a new space, but we're uh, venturing into it because we think it's part of where things are going in higher education, particularly for professionals. The last thing I'll mention is something called alternative credentials. Right now, the credentials available from higher education tend to be an associate degree, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and a doctorate. But increasingly with this focus on shorter amounts of content, the issue is can we offer alternative degrees that universities will stand behind? So we are actually exploring uh, these at UCLA Extension for the first time this quarter and we're starting to offer um, uh, badges which are available uh, electronically and people can put them on the LinkedIn sites that says I've learned X, Y, or Z from UCLA and uh, therefore have um, uh, an indication and essentially a, uh, a um, document that says that they have learned something from UCLA. So online education is also pushing the envelope in terms of what's actually uh, out there, what's acceptable, uh, and what can be done in the learning space. In terms of distinctiveness, I also wanted to mention that the learning experience will be critical in this space. Um, some people have the um, impression uh, falsely that uh, online learning is easy. It's really not, it's really uh, challenging. Uh, it requires actually more discipline than going to a classroom three times a week. 
but we want to make sure that the experience that we provide at UCLA is rigorous, like it is at UCLA. That's what we stand for. It has to be engaging. That's really important because only when students are engaged do they effectively learn. The material has to be relevant uh, for sure. It has to be interactive. So we want to make sure that faculty members and instructors are engaging their students in discussions and interaction at a distance, which is entirely possible, uh, so that they engage with one another and are not an isolated learner out there. And finally, we want to find ways to make the learning experience creative in terms of how we do it, in terms of delivering video, in terms of illustrating uh, parts of Los Angeles and the way Los Angeles is and its creative energy. We want that energy to infuse this uh, learning experience, and we think that's one of the ways we can make it distinctive. To say a little bit more about the learning experience, of course, the quality of the faculty and the, and the instructors and instructors is the most important distinction of all. And our high quality faculty will actually lead the way in making this uh, happening. But we also have education designed for a di digital world. Historically, individual faculty members uh, taught their own courses. They gave their own lectures. There was very little support for what a faculty member uh, did. In the online space, that's not true. Using technology makes it a totally different experience, and most faculty do not have that experience. So we hire instructional designers who work with uh, faculty members to design the program to fit into an online experience for students so we can maximize the learning experience. So we really have teams of people because we also involve video producers and, and things like that along with the instructional designers. So it's a team of people, faculty, instructional support, instructional technologists, videographers, all working together to produce a course. So it makes it a different learning experience. I mentioned earlier the importance of engaged learners. We know from all the research that it's engaged learners who learn the most. So we've got to keep them connected to the uh, materials. And that's what all that instructional design is about. One of the unique things that we're going to do is that we've linked up with a couple of professors of psychology here at UCLA, professors Bjork and Bjork, their husband and wife, and they've been studying learning for many, many years. And they've identified a whole series of things from all the research done on learning that can make a difference in terms of how well students learn. We're in the process of integrating those findings into these online courses in order to make them even more effective. Our point is, listen, we're at a research university. We ought to use the research to make learning better. And we think we can do that through this approach. We'll have a sensitivity to cultural differences. Uh, that's important. We have been serving international students for many, many years at UCLA. There's about 8,000 international students on campus. We have about 4,000 students uh, with us at Extension. So we have a lot of experience with lots and lots of different cultures, and that will be uh, um, inc incorporated into these uh, class experiences. And then finally, again, I wanted to mention this uh, LA, uh, LA's creativity. You know, Los Angeles is a very special place, and it's part of what attracts people from around the world to us. And it's that energy and that creativity and that innovation. And we want that infused in our, uh, in our uh, classes. So we plan to do include interviews with uh, a whole lot of different people from Los Angeles that are relevant to a particular content in each of our courses so that people begin, uh, students taking these courses, get a feel for that uh, creativity that we have in Los Angeles. Next, in terms of distinctiveness, I wanted to mention the service experience. So higher education, universities of all stripes in this country have not been known as highly student oriented. They've pr primarily been, you come to the university, you do what we want you to do. If you like it, great. If you don't, well, you might find someplace else. That's not the way the world works anymore. Students uh, have a lot of uh, bargaining power because of the um, demand for higher education. And we in particular in extension want to be highly student centric. And we're bringing that focus to UCLA Global Online. What that means is that we're highly responsive. 
that when people contact us, we get back to them quickly. We help them solve their problems. We are interested in making sure that they don't waste time when they don't need to so that we can serve them in a way that makes them want to keep coming back to UCLA. One of the unique things about online is that people don't move to another place to do online learning. So if they have a bad experience, they can just go to another online school. It's not like they've committed to living in Los Angeles. So that drives us to be much more and more responsive. And then finally, I mentioned earlier that we are uh, upgrading our technology significantly. Our goal is to be a high tech, high tech, high touch operation. The goal is that use technology, what technology can be used for to do really well those things, but focus on personal connection in those areas where we don't need technology or we shouldn't use technology. So our goal is this high tech, high touch, and uh, we think it is a, um, a model that will be very rece receptive out there in the uh, global learning environment. Next, I wanted to mention in ter terms of distinctiveness that in terms of uh, serving other countries, one of the things that we think is absolutely critical is having a uh, local presence in other countries. That does not mean building a campus. A number of institutions have tried building campuses and in all honesty, it hasn't worked out very often. What we're talking about is a relatively small presence, but one that allows us to be within another university at another country or at another location so that we can get a feel for the culture, that the culture can get a feel for UCLA and that we localize our programming for those areas. It will also allow us to have facilitators and tutors on ground that we are coordinating to make sure that the educational experience is uh, effective. Marketing uh, from on ground is critical. We cannot market from the United States to the rest of the world. We have to have support in those countries in order to do it well. And the on ground presence will also allow us to have some face to face and hybrid instruction. So we will bring instructors or faculty members for some classes, not all of them obviously, but some classes to another country so that uh, the students have a chance to actually interact face to face with those, uh, those instructors. We know in online that that face to face interaction occasionally is important. And so we uh, plan to build that into the work that we're, we're doing right now. Next, in terms of dis distinctness, we want to use the internet for what it makes possible. So what the internet does is mean that you can reach lots and lots of people. And as a result, you're reaching many, many different kinds of people. That means you have a population that has access to UCLA that has diverse educational needs. And they also have varying abilities to pay, obviously. So we may charge 40 or $50,000 for a master's degree but not everybody can spend that kind of money. And the question is, if we're providing access, can we provide other types of experiences? That's one of the key reasons we're also offer, offering shorter educational experiences like modules and learning bites, because we'll be able to charge less for those. They'll cost us less. And that means more people will be able to experience at least something of a UCLA educational experience. And we think that's a critical part of what we're trying to do as we try to reach the uh, various populations around the world. And then finally, what we're doing is, is, um, is that we want to make sure that UCLA's out research presence continues to grow. So we want to use the UCLA Global Online platform to essentially provide a digital outreach experience for people. Developing awareness and understanding of UCLA's research by having presentations by our faculty online, probably for no charge, so that people have access to the kinds of research that we are doing, the groundbreaking research, and therefore communicating the benefits of what UCLA research means to the rest of the world. Sometimes it's hard to, for people to understand, but we think we can patch it, package these research results in a way that will make a difference and will uh, be very well received in other parts of the, of the country and the world. So where are we right now? Well, I mentioned earlier, we're updating extensions infrastructure in terms of the student services technology, the marketing technology, 
our ed tech capabilities and our instructional design capabilities. We've added uh, almost 10 staff to our organization to start building this. Uh, our launch target date now is uh, January of 2019, so we're a little over a year away. Um, our goal with uh, our initial offerings is not to go out with uh, 15 different programs, but to go out with a smaller amount, maybe five or six, and begin to uh, see how the market responds and then grow from there. We don't want to uh, get too ambitious early on. We'd rather be successful instead. And so we'll start with a conservative build of our program and course offerings. And then finally, I wanted to mention just the level of academic interest that we've received so far. We've had eight uh, groups from campus express an interest in working with us. Uh, Geography has a geographical information systems program that has already signed an MOU with us to deliver that program online through global. Education is planning to offer a, a, a program in evaluation and is preparing a proposal right now for that. Information Sciences is looking at a uh, infra Information Sciences uh, master's degree. Nursing is the one that uh, will be uh, potentially offering the doctorate. Dentistry is looking to develop 50 to 100 uh, 10 to 15 minute videos of various parts of dentistry practice that it can distribute around the world, particularly in Asia. It does a lot of continuing education for dentists now, and it sees this kind of delivery mode as a new way to approach that audience. Um, the School of Public Affairs is interested in a global uh, public affairs uh, certificate program. And we're also working with business and engineering. Uh, engineering has a master's degree online the only master's degree now and we are uh, uh, will be delivering that we hope as well in fact I just got back from China where we signed an MOU with uh, Chinese University in Hainan province to deliver the masters online in engineering to them uh, starting in 2020 so already there we're developing a new uh, audience for the masters of online and engineering so this is an exciting time uh, we have lots of work to do yet but it is a new approach to education, and it's one that we think UCLA can be very successful with. So I will stop there, Christine, and take questions. Okay, great, thank you, this was wonderful. Um, okay, so I had a question submitted by Lisa. She writes, I am a professor of UC, I'm a professor at UCEAP in Florence, Italy, as well as being the mother of three UC alums, two from UCLA. Can you discuss course development pedagogy and teaching opportunities? Um, yes, I'll uh, refer back to my comments about um, the, uh, the way we develop courses in, in online is that we have instructional designers and we have instructional technologists, videographers. We work as a team with the faculty member uh, and we lay out a plan for how to develop that program. What are the learning outcomes that we're trying to achieve? And in uh, particular, we're trying to use a structure that has to do with presentation of material, an opportunity to practice that material in some fashion that's realistic, and then uh, assessment of the, the material. Um, we found that that's the most effective way and that multiple short assessments are better than uh, big assessments, uh, big stakes assessments like midterms and finals. So those are the approach we're, we're taking right now to our online learning. We will learn much as we move through this and faculty will bring their own perspectives, uh, especially around their own content. But that's the basic structure and it's a very supportive one with lots of staff beyond faculty members delivering the product. Okay. Um, oh, just one thing, Christina, I'd also mention this, this piece about engagement is really important. People think that it's not possible to be interactive online. It is uh, through a variety of ways. But in addition, uh, we plan to use what we call a smart network, which is synchronous uh, live interaction between faculty and instructors via video. So that we can have a, a faculty member here in the States teaching a class in China, and they can be interacting live with one another. This is a really technology that's developed rapidly, uh, and it's one that we plan to add into our uh, bag of tricks here. Very good. 
Okay, so I have another question submitted by Alexander. Um, and I think you covered some of this in your talk, but he asks, um, which courses will be offered? Does it include digital marketing? Um, he also asked when it will start and similar to HBX. So uh, interestingly, digital marketing, we plan to launch as part of one of our extension certificates in the first round in January of 2019. So yes, we'll be do, doing digital marketing. HBX is the Harvard Business School programs. And uh, there are sh uh, shorter programs that Harvard Business School puts out. We certainly have looked at their programs and looked at other competitors. Now, HBX is high quality. We want to be high quality like the HBX, so they set the bar pretty high for us, but we're going to uh, challenge that, that's for sure. And in terms of launch, it, the launch is in January 2019. Okay, so when will students be able to sign up for these courses? So we'll start marketing probably next summer. Uh, we'll start uh, marketing materials. And then the first uh, quarter will be winter of 2019. That will be the first courses they can take. But uh, we'll start the marketing five, six months earlier than that to begin to build awareness. We, in fact, made our first announcement about this at uh, the recent uh, NAFSA conference. Mm -hmm. NAFSA is an organization of international educators, post-secondary educators from around the world. Their 2017 conference was in Los Angeles at the Convention Center. Uh, we made a public announcement there of UCLA Global Online. Scott Waugh, the Provost and Executive Vice Chancellor, was there with us to speak about what we're doing with UCLA Online. And we had interest from many, many other universities who, who want to have their students take courses from UCLA uh, Online. So we were very pleased with the, the uh, reception we got there. That's great. Um, somebody asked, can I earn a UCLA degree online? Um, you would not be able to earn a UCLA undergraduate degree online. However, you will be able to earn um, master's degrees. Which master's degrees will simply depend on which one of the uh, academic programs chooses to work with us. I will mention that every single program that's available at UCLA is unlikely to be online. I mentioned earlier in the process in, in my presentation that uh, we must be a self-supporting organization. And therefore, for every single program that we're going to do or that is proposed to us, we have to do market research to ensure that there is a, a, a population that is large enough to be able to support the program financially. So that will be something that is factored into all of these decisions that we have to make about which programs. Does this mean that we will never offer undergraduate degrees? I don't think that's the case. Um, there are uh, significant populations, for example, even in California, there are six and a half million individuals who have some college and no degree. Most of those people cannot go to a campus to attend college. They have families and jobs. Uh, so at some point, maybe we'll address that audience too, but for now, it's master's degrees and certificates. Okay, great. Um, somebody asked, will there be uh, humanities courses as well? Depends, but my uh, hunch is that uh, in the process of delivering individual courses, that we will select some humanities courses to be offered that way, especially in the beginning to uh, test the marketplace a little bit to see how receptive people are to that. Um, one of the uh, uh, methodologies or approaches that I've learned in my experience in, in online learning is that uh, because these are self-supporting organizations, you need to find ways to have students who will come back to you over and over. And one of the ways to make that happen is by uh, offering programs as opposed to just courses. Because if you're enrolled in a program, you have to come for six, seven, or eight, or nine courses in order to complete. Otherwise, what happens is if you're only attracting people who take individual courses, the cost of marketing just for individuals becomes so high that it's not affordable. So we're gonna try to find ways to package this test it out a little bit and see uh, see how the uh, how the people respond to it. And if they respond well, we'll go ahead and continue to offer humanities courses and others. Nothing's off the table right now. Okay, great. 
Um, someone from the live chat asked, how do these courses differ from MOOCs? Yep. Or do Those they? Are massive online, uh, open, massive open online courses, okay? And they've been de developed primarily by groups like Coursera and Udacity. Those courses um, started about, uh, let's say, about 2012, so about five, six years ago. And uh, what they have done is put um, regular college courses online for free to people to take uh, in general. Uh, and oftentimes, massive numbers of people will sign up for these, register for them, um, like 150,000 people for a course. Uh, because they're free and um, and they're from uh, well-respected institutions. The challenge is that most of those people don't actually ever finish those courses um, because they don't have a compelling reason to do so. Uh, they were just looking to see what it was like. There's nothing at stake for them. They haven't paid anything for it. Uh, in addition, uh, while MOOCs are getting better, historically, they have not been a good educational uh, product in the sense that they were all about one-way delivery of content from instructor to student, mm -hmm. uh, much like the lecture mode. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we want a much different interactive experience than that. I will say that one of the challenges in the long run in educating uh, not just thousands, but millions of students is how to effectively scale a quality educational experience. And in that context, I would say that I think over time, educational technology will continue to get better and better and better, and we will be able to uh, serve many, many more people than we are now. Great. Okay, I have another question from Danielle. Some alumni may not understand the relationship between UCLA and Extension. Can you explain how they are, re are related and how they work together? Sure. So UCLA Extension is, uh, is a part of uh, UCLA, just like uh, the Anderson School of Management is, or the Samuli School of Engineering. Uh, we are a, an entity that focuses on non-matriculated students, however. The rest of the campus has students who matriculate uh, and take degrees from them. We serve the population that is not matriculated on campus, but still wants to take courses or earn certificates from UCLA. So it was a system that was set up to serve a population that the campus couldn't serve, but that through extension, we can serve and serve them well. And students take courses from us and certificates from us for lots of reasons. Uh, in terms of certificates, they're usually either looking to advance in their professional field to move up with a new set of skills, or oftentimes they're looking to change careers. Uh, and so they will come to us to do that. Also, some individuals who can't get courses on their own campuses will take Excel courses from us. Or individuals who, uh, when they were in college, didn't think they wanted to be in the health professions, decide later that they do. And so they need to get science background to do that. So they'll take science courses with us to get that preparation. So we serve a population that has a wide variety of needs, but who are not on campus. Okay. Um, so, and I believe you mentioned this a little bit. Another question came in. What are some of the campus collaborators on this project? Yeah, the, uh, I mentioned that, that list of uh, some geography being uh, the first one, but uh, there are about eight that have expressed interest. And uh, part of our challenge right now is figuring out uh, how we can be, uh, can we, how we can respond to as many who uh, are expressing interest and even more that are likely to come. But geography, education, information sciences, nursing, dentistry, public affairs, engineering, business, we have a really wide mix of academic programs expressing uh, interest in working with us. So that's, that's exciting. That is. Um... Another question, are there other players in this industry, and you had mentioned the Harvard Business School, um, and how is UCLA Extension leading or wanting to lead this arena? So um, there are lots of online providers, uh, not just in the United States, but uh, internationally as well. Um, I mentioned I was just in uh, China, mm -hmm. and uh, Zhejiao University that we 
uh, visited there has 150,000 students online. So uh, there are big <laughs> providers out there. We met, met, uh, we met with the University of um, Mexico, the Autonomous University of Mexico yesterday, and they have a lot big online presence. In the United States, Arizona State, Georgia Tech, uh, Northwestern, University of Wisconsin, University of Washington, uh, NYU, lots of universities have an online presence now, and we're just a little bit late uh, getting to the game here. That's why, as I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to use the infrastructure of extension to, to build the UCLA Global Online Entity and not build something different so we can sort of catch up quickly. But also, it's one of the reasons why we have to have a strong marketing operation. And most importantly, why I stress throughout this presentation the need for distinctiveness. We have to show how UCLA is different than these other providers in order to attract people uh, to us. Some people will come to us regardless because it's UCLA. Others, we're going to have to show that we're very, very distinctive. Okay. Um, another question that we received, are there any foreign countries in particular that you are thinking of focusing on for prospective students? So I, uh, I just mentioned uh, China and um, uh, Mexico. Both, uh, both of those areas that are uh, Asia and Latin America have been areas we were, uh, have been interested in for some time. Uh, India within Asia is also. I met with a group yesterday about Thailand. So Asia and Latin America are the big ones that we're interested in right now. Europe has a, has a well-developed higher education system and has probably less need uh, of what we do. Although we do at Extension serve a fairly significantly large European population, but it is uh, China and uh, Latin America primarily. In fact, I will say that we offered this past summer the uh, first, for the first time we offered courses in Spanish, uh, not teaching Spanish, but offering the courses in Spanish. So uh, that was a big step. And ultimately we'll think about offering them in Mandarin uh, that's a ways down the road, but uh, those are exciting things that we are looking forward to. Okay, great. So I have, um, as we wrap up, what are the three top? What are the top three things you want Bruins to take away from today's discussion? Discussion. The first one will be that uh, UCLA uh, is on the move. It's looking into a, a new area to expand its presence. Uh, it, it's an initiative that uh, the senior leadership of the university is behind, and uh, we hope to really make a, make a difference. Secondly, I hope people would uh, be open to online learning. I shared information about the quality issues and about uh, how we try to make experiences really effective in the learning environment so that it's really good. And thirdly, hey, tell your friends, UCLA Online is coming. Look for us. Thank you, Dean Schmutz, for your information on UCLA venturing into online learning. To everyone watching, thank you again for joining us and participating in the discussion. If you missed a portion of today's event or want to share it with others, you can find the recording on our UCLA alumni YouTube channel. Also, we want your thoughts and ideas for upcoming topics. Uh, through your suggestions, we are able to bring you tailored programming and we can't do that without your input. Our email address is regionalnetworks at alumni.ucla.edu. Thank you to Dean Schmutz and to everyone for being part of today's discussion. Thank you again to our Gold, Blue, and Life members. Events like this are powered by membership. Thank, uh, through your support, we're able to provide programs for all Bruins. Have a great day and go Bruins.